All right, hello guys. Excuse the mess, I don't care. It's a problem I have. Seriously though. Um, so here I've got something a little different today. This is a Tandy Color Computer 2 or a Coco 2 as a lot of people call it, I guess. I wouldn't really know because I grew up playing with my dad's C64 and all this was a little behind my time. I was born in 92 which, you know, I, I started using a lot of this stuff pretty young, but but a lot of this, I mean, I don't, I never really learned much about this. So I've got this, and I think I've got a, a basic manual for it, and I thought it'd be kind of a fun experience to to go through it and, and relive some, well, not relive, but live some 8-bit computer stuff for the first time. So I've got this, uh, this Zenith computer, wow, not computer, TV here. It's a little beat up, but it works good. Um, except that it only has an RF input. Normally that's an issue for a lot of things I work on, but not for this, because this has, um, we've got an IO port that I think breaks out into something, but I've got a TV out port here, which I believe is just um, normal RF output. So um, the issue is that I've got it on, I've got an RCA jack here. Um, and obviously, so, my TV takes your standard coaxial cable. So first thing we need to do before we can really play with the computer is figure out how to, you know, plug my RCA cable into this. So what I've got here is an old, this is an old um, coax cable. I've got an adapter here to, to extend it and I've what I'm thinking my plan will be so far, this one fits in here really tight and nice on that end, so I think I'm just going to cut this off and I'm going to solder an RCA jack onto this side and we're going to, you know, hope that everything goes right. Now, somewhere in this mess, I thought I had an RCA jack out. Probably not though. Of course not, that'd be way too busy rolling. Look at this, I just have like tons of boxes like this. And believe it or not, <laughs> we do actually have an RCA jack in there, although I don't think that's what I want to use actually. That would technically work. Man, what is some of this stuff? That's obviously a big ass capacitor. melting oh different video we'll look through that got a lot of crap I gotta go through um, well let me just duck into the other room real quick and see if I can find a, a, a cheap RCA jack okay so I've got my RCA jack here um, it's this is kind of a, a not a very good quality one I mean the, the cable itself is fine but it's not I don't think it's shielded or anything. Nice and flexible though. So, basically though, I'm kind of just hoping, let me get my soldering iron heating up. I'm hoping to just kind of solder these together, I guess. And then I'm hoping that it'll be short enough that it won't really matter. I'm probably not even going to heat shrink it, I'm probably just going to electrical tape it because I'm feeling lazy today. Yeah, after a long, exhausting day, there are two things I like to do. I like to sleep, and I like to fix stuff. And some people are very confused about that because fixing stuff is also my job. So how do I, how do I fix, you know, how do I enjoy fixing stuff still after I sit there and fix stuff all day? And for me, it's easy to think about. Let me just double check that you can see this. So these are, these are just bricks from an old fireplace that we took out, so they're fireproof. They make wonderful, um, wow, my flux has been leaking all over the table, that's beautiful. Hold on. <laughs> nice and dry. Uh, gross. Okay. Um, one second, I gotta grab a paper towel. Just clean up our no clean flux here. 
it only prevents you from having to clean it if you're an idiot. Not an idiot. Wow. Ruined. Okay. All right, back to it. Um, what was I talking about? I remember talking about being an idiot. Uh, oh yeah, recharging. Um, I mean, the stuff I fix for fun, it's stuff like this, you know? I, I get the thrill of learning something without the stress of having to, having to do it for somebody. Or even, you know, it's something that's in a little higher demand, like recapping something that's nostalgic to somebody and means a little bit more than just like, hey, we're really stressed and pissed off, come fix our printer. Which, not that, I mean, I, my day job is, is what it is, I like it. My boss is great, so I really, I mean, overall I've got nothing to complain about. It's just... Yeah, no, it's, it's a lot of stress. Just because of the nature of it. So I'm just going to electric tape this real quick. And... Okay, so I've got the computer, the computer, the TV plugged into this RF modulator right now, but this has a pass-through on it, and I'm hoping to be able to use this. I know that's going to further degrade the signal quality, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to do it anyway because I'd like to still be able to plug my Raspberry Pi into this TV so that I have multiple 8-bit computers, not just this one. Um, so let's grab the Coco again. And now I don't know anything about this. I mean as far as like where where it came from really I know that somebody bought it from in like a lot a storage lot um, so I'm going to plug it into a current one there, which is always a good idea when you're using old electronics and they're really easy to make very worth it so mine over here is you can see right here I've got a switch that just goes over right here uh, which is my, my just test power strip I'll, I'll turn that on and it goes to this, which is a 250 watt heat lamp. It doesn't have to be a heat lamp, but this is just the only, this is the only higher wattage, well, really the only incandescent bulb that you're gonna find these days in, in like Walmart. I could have gone to Lowe's or something, but Lowe's has been a crazy house here. So the idea is, if it's, here, let me see if I got my little test thing. Yep, I said you. So this is just straight shorted, right? So the idea is you're gonna run the power circuit, instead of in parallel like you normally would, you're going to run it in series through this lamp. And that way, so I'm just going to double check that's off so I don't electrocute myself. If I turn it on and it's dead shorted, instead of running all of the available, you know, 15 amps or whatever through here and frying the living crap out of that, you're just going to turn the heat lamp on. So, first of all, you know there's a short. Um, so since it's in series, you're, it's going to limit the, the amount of current that's going through it to the 250 watts that, that this thing can draw, um, which I think is about 2 amps. So, I mean, obviously 2 amps will still fry the crap out of whatever's in this cocoa, but not as much as 15 amps will, right? So, um, and obviously this isn't. This is also not going to work for stuff that's like you know, that's going to draw 800 watts or whatever, you don't, don't go plugging that into this, but, um, let me see if I can get a better angle, oh, look, sound card is sitting on the floor, beautiful, Rowan, nice job, it's even a nice, yes, that's what are you doing, the Coco too, I don't know how much power it draws, but I'm going to guess it's probably not anywhere close to 2 amps, um, this is great for smaller equipment like this. Let's see if it's listed on here. 0 0.2 amps. Yeah, so if that light bulb lights up, something is shorted. And honestly, it's probably just going to fry if it does light up. So let's just try it real quick. I'm going to flip my switch. Don't smell any smoke. I'm going to push my power button. Nothing yet, so I turned it back off. I'm gonna take my TV and turn it on. Um, so I've got my my other doodad set to channel uh, three, right? So 
Oh, need my, my little adapter guy here. Just gonna zip that in here. Plug that in there. I'm gonna plug that into the back of the Coco. Set it to channel four. Make sure. There we go. So that's on channel four. Hit the button. And nothing. Turn that the hell down though. Make sure that button's on even though I know it's bypassed. Okay. Well, it did not short, which is good. It also did not work, which is bad. Not super surprising considering how dirty this thing is. So just to remove the variable, of this uh, RF modulator. Let's go ahead and pull this out. I'm going to set it to channel 3. Sketchy as this is. There we go. I'm going to disconnect this guy right here. Set the Coco to 3. You notice that that connector is kind of dirty, so I'm going to spin it around a few times. Hopefully, you get it a little bit better connection. Plug this in here. I mean, maybe I should. Whoop! Something happened. Maybe I should have checked continuity on my on my adapter here. Well, we do have something. Okay. So the good news is. The cocoa itself seems to be working. The bad news is that does not. Okay, so we've got a few different things it can be. Obviously, first of all, it could be our TV here. We may want to grab something that plug into the RF. I noticed, though, that when I was moving it, I think it was when I was moving the actual plug on the the RF meter here. Yeah. So I think we're going to need to do some work on that section. Man, that is a terrible noisy signal. Look at that. But hey, it boots. That's that's pretty good. Um, so let me go look around, see if I can find. Maybe there's a there's a. I mean, because that that are our signals garbage so maybe there's maybe there's a better signal that I can output somewhere else because I know this TV will do better than this in fact yeah that's not um, let's shut the cocoa off here shut that off let me go ahead and now that we know it's not gonna blow up I'm, well, I'm going to leave it unplugged for now, but we're going to eventually plug it in right here. So now the question is, is this our issue, or is this our issue? And you, can see, you can see here, hopefully, um, that this is kind of corroded. It really doesn't make that good a connection. So. I think what, what I'm about to do is see if, so we've got serial, cassette, right and left. I'm going to go see if there's a way to output composite directly from this. Okie dokie, so now we've got 
we've got this, which is an Emerson TV from the 90s, maybe even newer. I don't know why it won't go to channel 3. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch this to channel 4 and just see if anything pops up on the screen here. Well, it looks like it's very possible that it's my crappy adapter here, so let's go ahead and just let's turn this guy off real quick. Um, it definitely seemed to get worse when I wiggled it, so I'm going to just assume it was my crappy adapter here first and make another crappy, probably equally crappy adapter, if not more so. And when that doesn't work, I will see if I can make one of the little adapters like this but out of a better cable um, and with a lot more care because I I'm having a hard time with that right at the moment that care thing you know in other words I basically don't which is why I'm not even using any flux and this is this is a good rosin core solder uh, so it'll it'll still get in there just fine especially on old copper like this, but you know what, before I even screw with this, why not just pop this other guy off here, throw this one on, plug her in, and see what the heck happens, huh? Let this turn on. Oh my goodness, would you look at that? Well, that looks a hell of a lot better, doesn't it? So there was something with this uh, this other adapter or the cable I was using or something. So regardless, we know this works now. It's pretty cool. And obviously the color's not the best thing I've ever seen in my life, but hell with it, man. Turns on. So that's, that's more what I was going for, you know? That, that I can live with. So let me just wrap this up in electric tape real quick. Wow, I just did a terrible job of that. The nice thing about not caring very much about it, making it out of garbage, is I can just wrap it with more electric tape. And you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I already soldered it, so. The important part now is just keeping those wires from touching each other or anything else. It is still kind of noisy, so let me, let me just go ahead and switch it to channel four. Just to see if we got any better signal on that. I'm gonna go ahead and Aha! Check that out. There we go. Just had to pull it the right direction. That looks great. We're just not gonna screw with it because that looks really good. G does not work. Seven. Down does not work. Left shift does not work. All right, well, so we got, that's a lot closer at least. I mean, so at least we've got, we've got it plugged in and, and turning on, which is, you know, I'll, I'll take it, that's big. That's a big step in the right direction. Um, so now, really, we have to get um, get this apart and see if we can get that keyboard fixed, I guess. Well, that's going to be it for today. So let me know what you think in the comments, and subscribe if you want to see more projects like this.